Hello, I'm Shauna Lawhorn with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition I, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 3rd. Persons seeking to build new housing, renovate or demolish existing housing, or change the use of property in San Francisco must obtain permits from the city. Proposition I would suspend the issuance of city permits on certain types of housing and business development projects in the Mission District for 18 months. Other neighborhoods would not be subject to suspension. Proposition I would cover these types of developments. The demolition, substantial renovation, conversion, or new construction of any housing development containing five or more units, and the demolition, substantial renovation, conversion, or elimination of buildings used for production, distribution, and repair, or PDR. Under city law, PDR uses a variety of business-related uses such as industrial, automotive, storage, and wholesale. These prohibitions would not apply to the issuance of permits for housing developments where all units are defined as affordable to low and moderate income households. A yes vote means you want to suspend the issuance of city permits on certain types of housing and business development projects in the Mission District for at least 18 months. A no vote means that you do not want to make these changes. I'm here with Scott Weaver of Save the Mission and a proponent of Proposition I. We're also joined by Tim Colon, Executive Director of San Francisco Housing Action Coalition and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. I'd like to start with some opening statements, and we'll go ahead and get started with Tim. Thank, thank you very much to the League for having me here. I run the Housing Action Coalition. We're a 16-year-old nonprofit with 170 member organizations, and we focus on the housing affordability crisis, which has to be the central civic challenge of our time, and more broadly, the question of who gets to live in San Francisco. And Everything we believe and all common sense and the chief economist of the San Francisco agree that Proposition I will make worse the very things that it claims to want to correct. We believe that Proposition I, if passed, will increase displacement of residents in the mission and the city. It will raise housing prices and it will make it much harder for affordable housing builders to acquire land. Thank you. Scott? Well, I read the chief, chief economist's report, and he didn't say anything about it causing displacement. In fact, he said it won't cause displacement. He also said that uh, the increase in rents for uh, vacant units would be an infinitesimal 0.3%. Now, when's the last time we had a 0.3% rent increase? Proposition I, all it does is put a pause on market rate development. Uh, which is usually luxury condominiums and other types of units uh, for a period of 18 months while the community d engages with the, with the uh, city of San Francisco, the planning department and mayor's office of housing to develop a plan whereby 33% of the housing built is affordable to low and moderate and 50% of the housing built is affordable to low, moderate and middle income San Franciscans. This is the very same plan that was Proposition K last year, but nothing's been done to implement it. Proposition K, by the way, which Mr. Cohen's organization supported. Thank you, Scott. We're now gonna move into questions, and my first question is going to start with Scott. How does a moratorium, or does it not, on new building projects help solve San Francisco's affordable housing shortage? Well, it's a it's a 18-month pause on development in the mission, on luxury development in the mission. And when I say luxury development, we're talking about units that are renting, a two-bedroom unit renting for between 6000 and 12000 a month. There's actually a $15,000 uh, luxury unit uh, on the market right now in the mission. Those units are out of reach for 85% for of San Franciscans. You have to earn $240,000 to, to afford even a, a, a uh, a uh, $6,000 unit, two-bedroom $6,000 unit. So this is going to put a pause on those kinds of developments while the community can play a little bit of catch-up and develop plans so that future development uh, entails development of affordable housing using a various array. If we want to go into it later, we certainly can. It's a great deal of detail, but a various array of housing solutions that we think are going to make the mission more affordable. The mission is 
ground zero of the housing crisis. It is already in an advanced stage of gentrification. And we can't really afford to have any more um, uh, 250,000, $2.5 million condos uh, being built in our, in our neighborhood. There's one project on uh, 20th and Valencia, $2.5 million for a luxury condo. There are four of those in that building, and the cheap ones in this 18-unit building are $1.5 million. Now, who can afford that? We, we got to do better, and I think we can do better. Tim, how would you address that question? Well, I guess we must have read different chief economist reports because he was pretty unequivocal in his views about what it does to increasing housing prices and displacement. Here are the difficult facts confronting San Francisco right now. Our population right now and for the last few years has been growing by 10,000 new residents per year. That's the result of having a red-hot economy that's attracting people from all over that want to live in San Francisco. City planners saying we have to, we will grow to one million residents in 20 years. I would ask, where are they going to live? And I think that the proponents of Prop I seem to believe that we can build a wall around the mission, that somehow if we build a wall, they won't come. But the fact is, is that demand is, is very, very strong. And San Francisco, unfortunately, is a city that's very stingy about increasing the supply of housing. And what the economist, the, uh, Dr. Ted Egan, pointed out is when you have red-hot demand and a limited supply, prices move up. We, there's not a single person in the city that disagrees that we need more affordable housing. The Housing Action Coalition absolutely supports that. What we have a disagreement about are tactics to how to get there. And we think that a, a moratorium, which is a moratorium on supply, it does nothing to address demand. It's not a moratorium on demand, is ignoring one half of the equation. So I would say that there are some common sense things that we could do that we all agree on, which is pass the housing bond, for goodness sakes. Let's, let's uh, reform the inclusionary housing ordinance, and let's start building accessory dwelling units, the in-law units. Thank you, Tim. Another question. If the moratorium is passed, and we'll start with you, Tim, if it's passed, how do we ensure that affordable housing is built in the mission during the next 18 months, given the high cost of development? We fail to understand how it could how it could do anything. This pause uh, does nothing to address the, the demand that continues to come. We would say the best way to address the issues of displacement that have that have so many people so upset and legitimately so is let's keep them in the city and the way to do that is to build housing for at all levels of affordability and building there will be no housing affordable housing built in 18 months if they say it's just a pause to plan my gosh the eastern neighborhood plan which we adopted after 10 years it took 10 years to adopt a plan that covers the mission it's impossible to imagine that they're going to, in 18 months, do anything other than to say, well, we need more time. We haven't done enough. We have to plan more. The issue is finding the resources and the funding to start building affordable housing, building more housing, and targeting it more intelligently to the people that need it the most. Um, this uh, is one half of the equation, just saying, well, we'll, we'll if we stop building housing, that'll make things better. So. I would say that um, it's, it's, we have to think of the mission as part of the city. It's not an island. It has two BART stops. It's flat. It has great weather. People want to live there. And our understanding is that they're coming. And just to say, well, you can't build anything, and that's going to improve the affordability doesn't make any sense in the real world and to any of the people that study real estate or economics. Thank you, Scott. So there is actually going to be affordable housing built during this time. There's uh, 1950 Mission Street. There's 490 South Van Ness. There's a project on Folsom, and I believe there's a project on Treat Street. They are all going to be in the pipeline during this 18-month period, and they can proceed. Um, we have to think long term. If we continue at the current pace of, uh, uh, of housing development. We've built 30,000 units in the last eight years. 25,000 have been luxury units. 
25,000, that's over 80%. We can do better than that. We do need a higher inclusionary rate. But let's do that before we build any more luxury housing. The mission is at a near end stage of gentrification. It is losing, it's, it's the birthplace of, uh, of Latin rock. It has, it's the center of art in this city. We're losing our Latinos. We've lost a third of our Latino population. We've lost a third of our families. That's in the Egan Report. We've lost um, uh, tons of artists. We've lost, just in the last uh, couple weeks, uh, there was a, a decision that's gonna result in the loss of 70 artist spaces in the mission at night at 20, 17th and Mission. So we gotta start thinking long-term. We gotta start thinking about solutions that give us more than 17% uh, or 12% affordable housing solutions that give us uh, the 50% affordable housing that the city has set its target. As the Eastern Neighborhoods Plan, it promised 64% affordable housing. It's given us 12 it has not succeeded, it has failed. And that's why we need a pause and we need to plan for affordability. Thank you. We're gonna move into closing statements and I would like to start again with you, Scott. Well, the, the no on I forces have used um, some pretty extreme statements. They've misinterpreted Mr. Egan's report. Mr. Egan said a 0.3% increase in rent in vacant units for, a, for an 18 month period is all the rent increase that we're gonna see during that time. Mr. Egan is a supply side economist who says we have to build 100,000 units before there's any effect on affordability. Um, we can't wait till 100,000 units are built. We gotta think of a different way to, to make an affordable San Francisco. Everybody will be gone by the time there's 100,000 affordable units. The uh, opposition has also said that this proposition will cost a billion dollars. That is a blatant lie. It, look at the controller's report. The controller is required to, to inform the voters, it's in the voter pamphlet, what the uh, cost to the city will be. It said it, the cost of the city will be a million dollars. So our opponents are exaggerating by a thousand fold. And that's what you do, and they're going to say it over and over again because they have millions of dollars of developers' money who have a lot at stake in this election to say something that is totally false. Thank you. Final remarks, Tim. Well, here are the plain facts. Uh, there are 1,500 units planned for, 1,500 new homes planned for the mission, of which 200 would be permanently affordable that don't cost the taxpayers a nickel. We, the plain truth is that the city doesn't begin to have the resources it needs right now to build the affordable housing uh, to satisfy the demand that's, uh, that's going on right now. And Prop I does nothing to do that. It doesn't raise a nickel to, to build more housing. The mayor got $50 million thrown into the housing bond to address specifically the mission. Almost half of that went for one project at 490 South Van Ness. Um, the plain truth is that building new housing, market rate housing, is the single largest source of funding we have now for the affordable housing that we so plainly need. Cut off that housing and, and we get almost nothing. And I guess uh, I'd have a question for Mr. Weaver. He's, he's clear, he's eloquent, uh, and speaks well about we don't want the housing here. We don't want the housing in the mission. It should go somewhere else. Any suggestions where it should be built instead? Or is that not the responsibility of the folks in the mission? It should, we need new housing. And every, it's so difficult to get housing built in San Francisco. Everyone wants it somewhere else. Please put it in some other neighborhood, just not ours. And that's sort of gotten us into the pickle we're in right now. I, anyone who's worked in, in the city and who deals with real world issues know that at a time of superheated demand, you can't just stop the supply of something. Well, thank you Can both. I this answer is... that question. I, <laughs> I think it really misreads our position. We want to build housing. There's a difference between affordable housing and unaffordable housing, and we want to build affordable Where housing. Where does the money come from? You, Who has the both money? of you, I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we are out of time. Uh, it's a fascinating conversation, and I think we could talk about it for much, much longer, but we're unfortunately out of time, so I want to thank you both for your comments you. and your time. We hope that this discussion has been informative. 
For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 3rd. Thank you for watching.